Hey everybody, it is May 14th. You are here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I'm Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager. Really happy to see everybody here. We have a pretty big group here today. Super exciting to see you all. Um, please, if you would like to add your name to the agenda, that would be great. Tell us what your favorite form of exercise is. I'm always looking for something fun to do because um, I don't ever exercise really. So yeah, I'm always on the hunt for something cool. I have been uh, um, riding my bike for a little bit now, so I don't know. Um, yeah, and of course I should mention this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct. So if you are not familiar with that, you should go read that. Um, it is probably exactly what you would expect it to be, but you should read it anyway. Um, because you are, as a part of this meeting, agreeing that you'll be, uh, you will adhere to that. Um, if you would like to chat with us on the side, uh, you are welcome to do that. You do not have to turn your camera on. Uh, we don't care here. So, yeah. Do whatever you like. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, we're going to move this down <laughs> and put it maybe down here. Is that okay, Kingsley? Down here? After the communications update? Um, and so we will start, I just thought <clears throat> it would be nice to kind of do these more regularly. It's, it's, uh, I've been remiss in putting some of these updates on our agenda. Uh, same thing with from the working groups as well. So I'm going to try to be a little more mindful of that, um, and be a little more deliberate in giving, carving out space so that we can provide these updates, um, from working groups, from context working groups, and also from the regional chapters. So every meeting will just um, carve out a little bit of space for that just I think it's important um so I don't know Arinka if you would like to give us a quick update on what's going on with the Chaos Africa devs that would be great okay thank you very much Elizabeth hi everyone all right some things we've been doing <laughs> at the Chaos Developers Focus Group um so what we noticed is that um, there is a bit of a gap um, of uh, high quality contributions um, with the budget project from our contributors. And um, we noticed that there's this challenge of um, creating a well-detailed uh, issue. And so we have to find people going on there and asking the creators of the issue to provide more context. So in a bit to help, um, newer contributors and even the holder ones to better understand the issues being created. Um, we decided to do three things. And one is to um, create a, an issue and a PR template for each of our repositories. So we did that for the event budget. We did that for the um, budget website, that's the front end part of project budget, and we did that for the budget API. So three repos for now, and um, that that would make it easier for people to be able to follow the template in order to be able to report on an issue or to create a PR. So the second thing we did was to organize a workshop in order to educate um, contributors on how to you know, the tips on how to get their PRs matched um, quickly. We had that last week, um, Thursday at 3 p.m. And that's during our um, focus group meetings. So we also intend to have more uh, targeted trainings like that so that um, much more than even the weekly meetings, we can then record these sessions that can be referenced by everybody in the community. So we can refer people to these recordings to be able to um, understand better how to um, create high quality contributions. Then um, what other thing that we did, which I think we'll discuss later in the agenda is the budget uh, 4.0 update, which is, um, adding three new metrics to the uh to the budget DEI event budgeting program. Uh three metrics for the in-person event and one new metric for the virtual event. And um, the third thing is that we we'll, we are trying to clear up PRs. Um Hinoch has started doing that when he came back from his work. Thank you, Hinoch. 
So we'll be clearing up PRs and creating new issues to further improve the project budget. Um, that's all we have for now. Yay, that was a great update. Thank you, Adinka. Does anyone have questions for her? No, thanks for all that work. I don't know. Oh, if we... oh go ahead. Sorry, I was trying to find the raised hand and I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, my Zoom updated and everything's hidden now. Um, so this is really exciting. I really love to see how you are trying to have make the path easier for new folks um, to do things as expected. Um, I'm curious if you are sort of measuring the impact of that. So like as a researcher, there's always a hypothesis that if we provide better templates or guides to something like documentation, then the contributions that you get are more likely to be better quality um, and maybe measured by like how much, to your point, how much back and forth was being asked, like how many times you had to go in and correct a way that someone did it or ask questions about it. And I'm curious if you're looking at any of those signals to say um, whether or not these these templates are helping or helping improve contribution from new contributors. Thank you very much. So definitely we are looking to um, keep track of those metrics to be able to measure the impacts. It's something that we recently did. I'm talking about um, last week, two weeks ago. And um, so far, uh, apart from me, I think I just have another... Um, just one more PR that actually followed the template. So we, we keep track of these numbers and um, uh, time it took for the back and forth on review or whether the PR margin went smoothly or not. So um, we keep track of those metrics. Other questions? I have a question, actually. So, Adinka, what do you think about taking your presentation that you did, um, and uh, I know we kind of tossed around the idea of like kind of editing it that out of the meeting and putting it somewhere just as a standalone. Do you think that would make sense or fit into the uh, education and onboarding courses that we are hosting? It seems to me like that would be a really good fit. What do you think? Hmm. So it depends on, because the workshop was quite long. So it depends on the duration we would want for the um, the videos from education. So I think I would like to speak with um, Peculiar about that and decide whether it's a good fit for education or we just um, put it somewhere else on Chaos YouTube channel. Yeah. But definitely, it's going on the contributed on the MD guide for the um, budget repositories. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I need to uh, uh, put an action item in here for me to actually edit out that that bit of them from the meeting. Okay. Okay. I will do that. Maybe to that point, I think it was like put it on the YouTube channel and then it could maybe be easily referenced in the contributing file. Okay, cool. I will do that. And thank you for putting that together, Adinka. That's really great. That's really, really great. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I must say that um, we plan to do more of these trainings. For instance, um, by our next meeting, we'll be talking about how to um, prevent conflicts or resolve con conflicts when creating your PRs. So I wanted to ask if there anything we should put in mind when we are having these workshops. Are you thinking about like technical things to have in mind or just like the delivery of the content? So I, I would say the delivery in the sense that, um, so right now we are considering about removing the meeting part and try to make it um, fit for other users, right? So I'm thinking 
when we are having that kind of training, should we kind of um, think I had to say, oh, this can actually be used in education or used for other things apart from um, the meeting. And so find a way to carve the presentation. That's a good question. Um, I don't know where peculiar, peculiar you are with education, like if how to resolve in this example, like how to do merge conflicts would be appropriate for education or like even the like how to <laughs> submit a PR or issue because we had kind of gone back and forth on this on education remember that it's like whether it's just kind of chaos specific or if it's open source more generally I don't I'm not sure um oh yeah I'm here so um we in one of our meetings we decided we are going to make it not just chaos. Uh, we made we're going to make it general so that people coming into chaos can easily navigate to the project or learn about open source, also know about chaos, right? So I'm thinking that uh, what Adenka is uh, is suggesting the recordings could come under education because it's part of it try to get newcomers or members know how to set a PR, how to navigate to find the right project or uh, issues that are available, how to do that on chaos project. Those should be under education, my thought. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah, we could have it, you know, just kind of separate from like here's stuff about chaos and then here's stuff about just general open source so yeah i think that makes sense too yeah just like group the way we group the first time so uh we put them on a group and they come there yeah that makes sense okay. and then i guess the answer to the question would be yeah maybe think about it as a recording that could be used for education Okay, I'll put that in mind. Okay. Thank you very much. There might also be um, a way to do a super high level one, Arinka, that is like five minutes. And then at the end of it, you could say, if you want to get a little bit deeper into this, here's another thing too. So not to give you more work or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. But um, I okay. think it is super valuable, you know, because especially for newcomers, like they don't, you know, how, how are you supposed to know? You don't know. It's not something you just are born with that knowledge. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's great. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Arinka about the, the dev group? All righty. Let's go on then from the communications reboot team. Woohoo! Alice, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hello. We are a reboot team. It's been decided. <laughs> um, I love that name. I didn't see it before until I came to this document. <laughs> um, so, a, a very quick background on. on why why this is happening and, and how it, how it came to be um so when i went to osna um, open source summit north america in seattle uh, like four or five weeks ago um i had a great opportunity to chat with elizabeth and nicole and a few other people um and one of the things that i was curious to know is like when we're doing c c outward communications which would you know in a in a in an enterprise company or a commercial company would be called marketing um, do we sort of theme things and do we use campaigns and do we coordinate the different outputs with podcasts, social media, blog posts? And the answer was like a, a little bit, maybe we could do more of that. <clears throat> so we decided to try and pick that up after, um, after com coming home. Um, and that's what this is about really. So um, what the communications reboot team would like to be is anyone who would like to get involved with making that happen, basically. So if you would like to help with ideating campaigns, coordinating them, planning out the 
the, the bits um, that we're going to make, actually making those bits, um, helping to publish them, helping to amplify them, um, deciding on like the themes for the year, that that kind of thing, then we'd love to like collaborate on that. Um, <clears throat> I created a doodle poll, which is to see like, can we get together and just get to know each other a little bit? So the objectives, so the poll is for a meeting, like to like, when can we meet? Uh, but the objectives of getting together would be to like, who else is there in chaos? Who is already active in comms or would like to be active in comms? Um, like, what are your skills and how much time do you have? Because, you know, I have skills where I don't know what everyone else's skills are. Um, what do we actually want to achieve? Because I have some thoughts, other people have some thoughts. Let's get those together and see what makes sense. And then, OK, if we can agree on some stuff, what's most important? So we want to set some priorities. Um, <clears throat> So if you can't come to that meeting, and that's totally fine, feel free to just put your name in and just put X's all along, um, and then I'll know that you're interested anyway. Or if you want to, you can go to the Slack channel, which I've given there, which is WG website. We don't have a comms channel yet, and it might be that there just isn't, isn't enough interest to start a new channel. I didn't want to start yet another Slack channel. Um, so apologies to website folks. I know that's the place that this kind of conversations happened in the past. That's why I picked it. Um, I already preceded a note in that earlier. So if you if you're thinking, oh, am I just going to go into the Slack channel and like speak into the wrong place? It might be the wrong place, but I've already put my note in there, so you'll be threading off my note, and we'll be fine. So that's about all I have to say on that. Um, Elizabeth or Nicole, did, was there any bit that I didn't cover, or like some extra? angle to it that I missed. This is Nicole. First, I want to say that was a great overview, Alice. That's uh, fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, the only thing that I would have to add is that uh, the board uh, did some um, planning for 2024 goals. So the group will also be looking at that to see how we carry uh, those 2024 goals forward and, and implement uh, on them. Um, so just incorporating that into the mix when we look at uh, what the, as a group, what we do and the priorities that we set. Makes sense, do we have a, Elizabeth, do we have a blog post for those goals? I think we do, don't we? We do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I've shared it with that group, but if not, I can. Um, and then the only thing I would just add to what Alice and Nicole said is um, that it, it makes my heart happy to feel like we are all, you know, coordinating things because I mean, so much of what I do <laughs> just feels like so much on the fly. I just am really happy that there is a group that is gonna help make it more deliberate. And yeah, I appreciate you all very, very, very much, very much. Mm, well, and Elizabeth, we, you're, you, you know, for me, I think you're a rock star, so we appreciate you as well. The other thing that I was gonna mention, and just an idea, it's sort of low hanging fruit for the group, is. Uh, if if we know when uh, different pieces are being published, uh, different blogs that you know um, folks are writing and that sort of thing, this might be a, a a great place to to know when those pieces are being published, so that we have sort of this engine um, to. Uh, to put more discipline or to put more concerted effort around promoting um, these different things. So if you're giving a talk at, at a local conference or you're writing a blog about a particular topic, uh, these things are already happening. Um, I, and we just wanna be there to, to, to help. You know, part of this is just um, amplifying uh, what, what is, of all of the great work, but it's already happening. 
I'm wondering if we could even just start, Nicole, with using like the last minute of this meeting or two minutes, like a go to the order kind of thing, where if people have something they want to mention, they could add it to a list here and then it would at least be in the minutes. That would be awesome. Yeah. One of the things that we do in our um, CNCF uh, tag meetings for contributor strategy is part of every single meeting agenda is what do we want to promote next week? So, so it doesn't have to be next week. That just happens to be what we do. But I think, I think something about what, what do we need to promote and just reminding people to think about that. And it doesn't necessarily fit into the kind of campaign structure, but um, it might help us be more organized about gathering some of that data. I don't know how others uh, feel, but I I love that idea, just to be more mindful of what's coming up and and um, you know we may be prepping slides for a local presentation we're giving or you know what have you and we don't always think of you know, oh, wow, yeah, gosh, I should be promoting that beforehand, or wow, there's an opportunity to promote it afterwards, or that sort of thing. So if we can build some more mindfulness um, into that, that would be great. I, I guess what I'm sort of pointing to or, or trying to say is it's actually a while the the communications reboot team will be a a a, um, a, a place to to come, it, it would be great if it were a collective effort, um, part of our community to um to be just more m mindful of hey I'm doing this or hey I'm doing that or yeah so I, I I love that whole mindfulness and how to bring that into our community. So I should send you a link to the Open UK presentation I'm doing tomorrow online, right? That would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> Actually Friday, not tomorrow. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I know because I'm seeing this and I'm like, she, you're doing a lot. <laughs> I think it may also help to your point, Nicole, about it being more of a community effort. I think it will also help bringing some more of the like carving out more space for updates from different groups and, and just kind of keeping us all together and and moving forward. Um, yeah. So I hope that helps, too. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is awesome. I'm I'm really excited about this. Me too. Me too. Me too. Uh, any other questions for Alice, Nicole, any of those other folks on the on this team? Okay. All right. Uh, let's go on to our designers. Kingsley, I hope it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, so hi everyone. Um, so um, like I said earlier, I didn't actually plan doing this myself. So I have here with me like members of my team. All right. So um maybe I don't know if people just spare each of them like a minute to kind of like give a rundown. So because um basically I have other leaders overseeing individual projects, right? So we sort of like work together. It makes the, the work easier for everyone. So I think I'm just gonna call on um, Lami, so she'll just talk about the Ogo project. So over to you, Lami. All right, thank you, Kim And hello, everyone. Um, Emmanuel and I are working on the um, Ogo website, we design, we are redesigning the website. And this project started about two months ago. <laughs> and um, what we are currently, or what we've done is to brainstorm problems, challenges in the, in the previous and the current websites, and then created like a new um, uh, vision of what we want the websites to look like. And we have worked on the 
homepage where you can users can immediately search for a repository and see visualizations. The page where they see visualizations is also being worked on. And we are making um, improvements on that page currently. In one of our recent meetings, um, done with a very valid issue of color psychology and, accept and, and um, accessibility. So that's our focus currently. We are working on, or we have changed the colors of the charts and extended accessibility checks to um, other colors used on the website and typography too. And another thing we started a few weeks ago was um, a style guide. We started creating a style guide for many reasons, which I think Emmanuel might want to shed light on. But um, one thing that this will do, especially in line with um, the discussions that has been raised in this meeting by the Inca, is that it will aid um, continuity so that as more people want to join the project, there's like a documented template or guide for them to work with. I should also mention that the style guide and the general design of the new Ogo websites follows the pattern of the Gajin websites. So the style guide could also be useful for future web design so that we have like a similar style for all um, websites owned by Chaos. Um, another thing we're working on is a login and sign up experience for Ogo and eventually a repository um, uh, the place where we have the list of repositories. We created a roadmap, um, a more refined roadmap about two weeks ago. There was one earlier, but it was not very detailed. And the more refined one is on the design works. And in coming weeks, we would um, complete small features and just do some user testing and hand over to the devs. So the design is currently happening on Twitter. You can check um, a, there's a readme for um, more information there. Thank you. That's all for me. Okay, thank you so much, Lami. I don't know if you have a specific question for Lami before I call on um, uh, Iman. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'd just so, like to say uh, the job that Lami and her team are doing is fantastic. Some really, really great design work. We really appreciate it. I, I, I just dropped the Figma link on the chat, so you can be able to check it out. Um, so let me mention something which I also want to call on Emmanuel. Emmanuel recently joined us here at the KS Africa, and then he's been doing amazing work towards um, creating more design components. Um, one of the things we're looking at achieving is not just working on this different product, but creating a, a robust um, style guide design system Right, that cut across different products we're going to be working on here in chaos, both the ones we have now and the ones we probably will be <laughs> creating in the future. So, um, maybe Emmanuel can just share just a little bit quickly and briefly around you know the components and the things we're working on. Yeah, hi Emmanuel, are you here? Yeah, yeah, okay, can you guys hear me? Okay, yeah, um, hi everyone. So I think another aspect we're working on um, Chaos for um, designers is kind of creating like a robust design system for Chaos. So it's still in the pipeline, right? So it's kind of like set of design decisions and components and colors that enables designers to work faster and also maintain consistency across all the product lines. So um, one challenge we notice is that when a designer comes on board and kind of wants to contribute, we they, we don't want them to kind of use random colors or having to open different files to copy colors out right so we are planning on having like a robust design system um for chaos where we have shared libraries across all the product line like just what like what lami said um uh, the ogo design right now is taking inspiration it's kind of taking few colors and um, component from the project badging website, which is kind of what we are also trying to do to maintain consistency, such that um, all products we have its own peculiarity, but then there could be like a um, source of true in terms of colors or typography that are consistent, and we can know that okay, this project is all coming from chaos. So that's one of the things that we are kind of working on at the moment to have like a robust design system, but then each pro each um product let me call it product right i mean i don't know if i'm right but have its own peculiarity in terms of component but then the basic 
um, languages like colors, typography, spacing are all consistent across board, but then it will have different components that are peculiar to each product. So that's one of the things we are currently working on. Okay, so thank you so much, Emmanuel. Uh, just to add to that, so um, I when I joined Chaos, I noticed that um, I think um, whoever did the branding, right, did a great job. But then uh, some of the assets, right, in terms of uh, um, maybe other design assets, you know, are still missing. So uh, and um, uh, maybe some visuals. I know we put a whole lot online. It's silly that I share a lot of posts on LinkedIn and a couple of other at the same time. So, we are also um, just in line with creating styles. So one of the things we are looking at are also creating those marketing materials, um, um, the design templates and things we need for LinkedIn or any other socials we're using. So um, that is actually ongoing at the moment. Yeah, so that design is ongoing. So maybe um, I'll share the drive link, you know, and and I think this will also make it easy for new contributors, design contributors to also jump on designs. So everything doesn't really revolve around me. <laughs> so yeah, I think um lastly we have um an in-house project, Chaos Africa project called Alphos project. We've been working on. I think this conversation is just around uh, what what has been happening around the design working group. So um we have Felix right to jump on that and just give us a brief summary. Hi, Felix. Hi, um, thank you, Kinsley. Hello, hi everyone. So um the Air Force project, which is the African Open Source uh, project, which was um uh, the part of the um GitHub uh, pilot partnership from uh, from a couple of months back. So we are we are making headway on that and we recently I think the homepage is live. For now, but uh, we are still on the design process for some other part of the pages. So the the project is supposed to be um I think the 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 objective or the goal for it is to spotlight um open source um projects in uh, by Af in Africa. So um recently we had uh, in our last call we had a discussion about uh, because we had a little setback on how to work work around things for the um in terms of the back end and the and the front end how to display the um the submission so um uh, i think we we'll still have that in discussion um earlier on people like um Mesomad, they have provided us with um the the style guides which we have been using so far although there have been talks uh to unify it with uh the style guide for chaos, which um Lamy and Emmanuel mentioned, but I think that should that is the pipeline for for um in the future. So um yeah, I think right now we have like I said the we have a homepage ready which is live thanks to our developers. Then we have the um admin uh, the admin uh, site. Which I uh, say we 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 have a little setback on that, uh, but we have uh, some part of the design complete, and uh, we also have the yeah. So that is basically what we what we're doing, what, where we are at uh, on that. So um, I think uh, yeah, Kisley has dropped the link. In case anyone wants to see that. Okay, so thank you so much, Felix. So um, I think that will be it from us. So um, yeah, so we are working on uh, most of all these things simultaneously. So like I said, you know, each and everyone that I just spoke are kind of like the sub leaders leading the individual project. So we kind of like sing together and then just idea town work on what's best. So thank you so much, Elizabeth. I think over to you. I don't know if you have specific questions. Yeah, I can answer them. I do have one question, um, but before I say that, just thank you for all of your amazing work. Um, yeah, chaos would not be where it is without our design team. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you folks. Um, it's really great to hear what you're working on. Um, quick question about the this part right here, the marketing materials. So um, in light of our earlier update about the comms team, 
is there a place where if there's something special that somebody's looking for a photo or design something that's working on something that is going to go out where would they connect with you all or ask for an, an asset or see if we have one already or you know just to connect with you all on that does that make sense yeah 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 so i think you know um slack is just the best place for that so the design channel on slack so yeah, of course, I'm always readily available to answer any question regarding design requests. Okay, amazing. I think that will be very, very helpful for that team. So, um, does anybody have any other questions for the design team? I'm just curious what else people are up to, because <laughs> this is amazing work. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. And 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 um, all the, I I think um, it will be in the Chaos Africa updates. I'm curious to know the other different chapters in Chaos Africa that sprung up um as the designer the designers um chapter the devs chapter. There were some other chapters. I'm curious to know if they are still alive, but probably it's the next update. So <laughs> I'll keep it there. The other chapters are alive. They're just much smaller. <laughs> so <laughs> they're newer and smaller, but they are there. Um, okay, so I guess we can move on. We have 10 minutes left. We still have quite a lot on our agenda here. Quick, quick question. Yeah. Is there a uh, shared chaos repository for our design artifacts and images? Important question. Um, so so um, none at the moment that I know of. So, and that's what we're trying to correct, you know, creating a, a, a central this thing for, um, so we have this unified system where um, everyone can pick up whatever design assets they want to pick up, you know, merchandise or anything, you know, so, um, and also creating some of those assets because we don't have most of those assets too. So um, in the coming, Probably from like next month, I would say maybe I'll be sharing more updates on the progress we are making on that. There is a place in the repo. I think it's in the community repo. It's like the media outreach or something folder, which is where we have some of the design assets. That's where I've been going to look for things when I need when I need a logo <laughs> or a, a bit of something. So it might be it might be nice for the stuff that you already have to maybe put some of that with the rest of it out there. That's okay, funny. thank you so much, Don. Yeah. I always go to the drive, the Google Drive, where everything is <laughs> under the Chaos account. So yeah, that would be good to get them all in place for sure. Yeah, that would be great because I, I need a lot of that stuff for presentations and I'm always struggling to find something. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the Chaos Africa updates. Ruth, is this, uh, did you put this on here? You ready to? Yes, and I'm going to rush through it. I know we have like short time. So okay. it's a in enough question. The other chapter, the other focus groups are still like the technical right down to need to manage. I think again, I uh, wanted to uh, provide that technical writing bit. So uh, maybe you should share an update next week. Um, and then on the things I put on the agenda, the, for the first item, um, the are uh, some the team that is uh, working on like disability and inclusion within Chaos Africa has planned is planning an event, uh, an outreach event for people living with disability. So they reached out to uh, Project Enable Africa. They're based here in Lagos. Um, so the plan is to have like an event. Um, to introduce people with disability um, to open source, the people that, the ones that are, you know, tech uh, savvy um, to open source. Um, so they're still working on that. And uh, Winifred, uh, Victoria, and uh, Brian, they're the ones, and Beckley as well, they're the ones working on this. So the date is next month uh, to be a fiscal event um, for about two to three hours. Uh, so they would pro project enable provide us with like a space, you know, um, and then uh, invite their community to be part of the events and would like come with like uh, snacks and uh, swag. Um, then the speakers talk about open source, uh, 
collaborating open source on the funds and challenges as well. And um, yeah, have a good event. So we're still in the works of planning it. So that's the first update. Um, and then the second one is uh, if I don't would come from one of our um, contributors, Kennedy, we had to plan it the Python would come in Calabra. Um, and you know, to introduce people to Python and it's an open source. So um collaborating with uh Kennedy to um see how the participant of the bootcamp can also contribute to chaos, uh the Python project we have in chaos. And um potentially if the education uh those if the education videos are up, we can also share to that community as well. Um and then the last one is plans to participate with Python Uganda. So you know to be able to come. Um but it's in October. Um they reached out to us, so um there will be plans we're still planning to participate in Python Uganda. So yeah, those are all the updates. Is there any questions? Any questions for Ruth? All right, thank you, Ruth. Amazing stuff here. Very, very excited to see all of that happening. Okay, let's move along then um, to this. Uh, I can speak to this as well as Arinka. As, as she uh, alluded to earlier, we are releasing these through three new metrics uh, to our um, event badging, I should say adding these three new metrics to our event badging application. So um, folks who are applying for a badge will have to answer more questions about these three things. Um, these are the three that are going for in person events and then event accessibility will also apply to virtual events. Uh, these two things are not applicable for that, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know if people have questions about that. Is it ready to go? Just about. Um, we've merged in the checklist part. We're mm -hmm. gonna merge in the HTML today, tomorrow. Okay. So, yeah, I've um, let Angela know at the LF. I've tagged the badgers. I've um, uh, what else did I do? I tagged all the the people who have sent in an application recently because um, okay. we have folks outside the LF who are who are opening applications. So there's an issue in the badging org in the event uh, repo mm -hmm. where people can ask questions or okay. whatever. So did, um, did you get a response from Angela? Mm, not yet. Um, not yet. I okay. just early, early this morning. So oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, th those just got merged in this morning. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then I put in the chat, this seems like something to promote. Sorry, Enoch. Yes. For the comms team. <laughs> so uh okay. You're done, Mart. I'm done. Okay. I was just saying, um, um, Elizabeth, I think it's important while these, I saw the PRs, but I hope before they get merged, we have no open um, open um, application because it may affect the, the, the results. Yes. Uh, agreed. I don't think we have any open ones right now. Adyinka has been an absolute rock star. Because the so typically we have a little bit of a wave in the spring and a wave in the fall and our spring wave is is still waving so I don't, I don't know what, why but um, yeah Adinka is, is amazing and has been um, super on top of all of the applications that are coming through and I did try to communicate the fact that the the new metrics are not um, applicable to um, any application that has already been badged. So it's not like retroactive or anything like that. It's it's just from here moving forward. So Kevin had a question in the chart, if there is time anyway. Yes. How are these new questions connected to the badging outcome? Yeah, so it's just more questions that they have to answer um, and more checks on the checkbox. Uh, more checkboxes, I should say, to be checked. Does that make sense, Kevin? Does answering these questions affect the badging outcome? Do you mean the, the badge that they're going to get? Yes. Yes. So these are just questions, just like all the rest. So like family friendliness, um, you know, all of the rest of the ones that we ask about, we are now also asking about these three. Okay. And the 
the responses that we get to these questions affect the level of the badge that they get. Yes, just like so the other metrics. Yeah. How how did how does what how does that affect it? So uh, it's still percentages. So there will be more checks for them to check off, and then the percentages are the same. Yeah, I think if 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 you do the math and you have like the right total of what you're computing, it shouldn't affect, uh, it, the, the system should stay the same in what percentages you'll get if you're really increasing the numbers and dividing them well. Okay, so are we devaluing the other questions in that section by adding more questions? I don't know what you mean. Tell me more. So these, these questions are added to a a specific part of the uh that it's just it's a percentage in whole in whole yes yeah so okay these... so so each question response in whole so it's not to that specific section of uh okay yeah no so we just added so like you know family friendliness is a section and there's a couple of questions that we ask about that so now event location inclusivity is a section and we ask a couple of questions about that public health and safety is another section okay. yeah but the sections aren't, uh, they aren't separate. It's a percentage as a whole. As a whole, yes, of all of the metrics, yes. Okay, so so when we add new metrics to that, we're kind of, we are actually kind of devaluing the the previous questions that are there, right? Because the, the previous questions are now not as important as they were prior. I guess that's the, that's the question that I had. Well, I mean, technically, yes, yeah, so we can't really add new metrics without doing that. I mean, I think there was a push to add new metrics, correct? That we were concerned that we were stuck on the same metrics. And so the effort was done to add new metrics. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, uh, it's quite the right word. It's just we're trying to increase the breadth of questions that we're asking for people. Yeah, and I think we're trying to also just give them, give the event organizers more things to think about. Specifically, um, I mean, they've already been, we've asked like one or two questions about event accessibility, but we didn't really go into depth. So we are asking them for more information. Um, public health and safety, we've never asked about before. So I think that, I mean, I guess like to your point, Kevin, yes, there's there's more opportunity to do less things and get a good badge, but there's also more opportunity to do more things and get a good badge. This was this was not a critique. I was just I was just trying to understand how the uh, how the new metrics affect the uh, the existing process. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at the time. We are we are over time. Um, so let's continue that conversation in the DEI working group. I think would be good. Um, definitely, we can talk about it more for sure. All right. Well, um, I guess that's it for today. Sorry to keep you all two minutes over. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. We will, the rest of the items on the agenda, we'll just push to next week if that's okay with everybody. Um, if there's something urgent, we can, we can uh, speak to it in Slack for sure. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll see. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.